So what is the lesson of the analog between the real world and the real world and the design software world? It's that applications are designed to be easy to use and familiar. Apple did a lot of testing on their desktop designs and they used their people on staff and they kept experimenting and trying things out. That's sort of how they came up with their own approach that was completely different from what Microsoft, Microsoft ended up adopting. Um, it's very much everybody's exploring and figuring it out on their own. But uh, at Apple, they figured out the drop-down menu. They uh, started working on some various conventions, and they came up with uh, what became the, the, the Lisa and then the Macintosh. Um, now, look today, we have a completely different metaphor of the page, and we have much more complex interfaces. But um, does anyone else have trouble getting around Facebook? <laughs> yeah, I have, I have trouble. You know, how do I create a group? Every time I go, I don't know how to do anything. Um, how do I create a page? Um, I did, was really stumbling around until I found it. Um, how do I see unread replies? I still don't know how to do that. I get, how do I find out if someone's replied to something I have up there? I get an email. And that's how I have to find out. And I just can't stand it. <laughs> so here's some basics about uh, functional interactive design. Um, one is that you need to have a clear mental model. People need to understand what they're getting into. Is it a shopping cart? Is it a registration process? Uh, is it a community site? Is it Facebook? Reassuring feedback is very important. Um, when you're typing, you see characters on the screen. That's reassuring feedback. You might uh, have click sounds uh, on your phone when you're touching. Uh, the reassuring feedback. It's, it's letting you know that you've actually done what you think you've done. And we'll have some examples a little bit here. Uh, it's, it's, you've got to know where you are in the system and what you need to do to do next and how you can get back. You want some consistency. You want the commands to do the same thing in, in varying contexts. The primary navigation in Drupal is one example of that. Um, and you want something that's kind of intuitive. You don't want to spend too much time thinking about what you're trying to do. You just want to do it. You, know, you get in your car, you just drive. You're not thinking about the car interface. Unless it's a brand new car, and you don't know where anything is, and you kind of freak out. That's what I did once. Um, but now, you know, you don't think about it. You think about what, what is the most transparent uh, device that we interact with, well, for me, it's my glasses. You know, I, I notice them when I'm cleaning them or putting them away, but when I'm wearing them, I don't even think about them. And our most effective user interfaces are the kinds of things where they're just extensions of ourselves and we really don't have to think about it. So we're not designing for just what it looks like, but how it behaves. We're, we're designing for the quality of how we and it interact. And this leads us to some uh, functional design concepts. And there are a ton of them. And I have some recommendations for further reading at the end. But um, we're going to go through a couple here. One is affordance. And this is, this is one of my favorites. This is how the design invites you to use it. And let's start with some real world examples. This is the bathroom in the building where our office is. Um, I don't know how they got there. I, they either had a loop handle and, and added a knob so they could lock the door, or they had a knob and they had a loop because the door is hard to pull open. I don't know. Uh, why not keep the knob and make the door easier to open and get rid of the loop? Yeah, you know, I could. It's, I still today will walk up there and pull on the, the loop and, and the door won't even open, and it's just frustrating. <laughs> it's affording a behavior, an interaction that it doesn't uh, doesn't conform. Here's something that's even worse. <laughs> how, many, how many of you have walked up to a door like this and you think you, you have to pull and you're supposed to push? Or, or you know, I mean, it's who designs a handle like this? It, it, it looks like it was manufactured and says, push on it. I, I don't understand. Um, then there's like uh, this door. <laughs> You know, I, don't, I don't understand what you're supposed to do here. <laughs> but the funny thing is that uh, if, if you know, the, the previous 
slide, if people will re-push, they'll see the loop and they'll push. Because people respond to the function and the, the reading is once removed. That's why you can have instructions on a site, don't click here and it looks like a button people will click there. So, let's talk about the next thing. That first part was actually somewhat legible, but how many how many websites have low contrast, especially on their primary content? Where you, it, it's it's somewhere it looks fine on your screen, but someone else looking on a different monitor in a brighter room, maybe they have trouble reading. Um, how many of you are familiar with the story of Garland? Um, Garland was developed for Drupal six uh, to replace. Uh, what had been uh, Blue Marine uh, before for the default Drupal theme. And all the designs were low contrast and I was one of the few people who were just complaining, this is not legible, this is not legible. And finally the designers uh, teamed up, uh, Steve Wittens I believe uh, developed the, the color module, plugged it into the theme, fine, you set your own colors for the text, for the background and everything and the problem was solved. And that kind of changed how uh, we handle theming. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, perceptual limits. At a glimpse, you can only see three items. If there are more than three, you might mix up four and five, or five and six. You can't really tell in just a flash. Maximum what number of objects is any intention? Seven. And most people can only remember up to five words for more than 30 seconds. Do you remember those words that were up on the screen? It, it's just, it's not possible. Um, there are the words, just for your reference. Um, one of the problems is that there are too many words and it, they're not organized. So there are what is, is in design is called hat racks. There are five hat racks to design. Alphabetical organization, chronological organization, uh, ge geographic organization, organizing by category or taxonomy, or continuum. Um, this is to take a, a bunch of stuff and organize it in a way that people can an example here with uh, some of my favorite creatures. Hmm. Here we have a bunch of kittens in no particular order. Um, we can organize them by category. This illustrates uh, also a concept of chunking, uh, creating chunks of information, it's easier to digest. I'm not an expert on cat reads, by the way. I just sort of took the faces that looked kind of similar and put them together. Um, you can organize them by chronology. This is was a guess at the ages of the kittens. You know, they're all kittens, and so it's kind of hard to tell. But I thought, tried to put them in an age of chronology. Um, you can organize them by location say, well, here's where they are from different parts of the world. Again, I just made this up for illustration purposes. Um, you can organize them in another way. You can organize them alphabetically. And uh, you just want to go by names. So, or you can organize it by continuum. And here what I did is I took them by coloring, from the lightest coloring to the darkest color. And again, this projector is not doing it justice, but that's the, the, sort of a visual appearance of, uh, of how you might put them in order. Another way might be doing it by height or by weight. 